All right. Well, thanks so much for hopping on with us this afternoon. Um, you are currently sitting just one spot below that championship four cut line going into the weekend here at Kansas Speedway. How are you approaching the weekend? What are your thoughts going into it? You know, for us in the 18 team, it's business as usual, to be honest with you. We, um, you know, felt like the strengths of our race team, the, our decision-making process, preparing for these races, um, and then in the races, I feel like, you know, we've done a good job of maximizing our days. Um, yeah, I don't feel, I think it can change. I think you got to play to your strengths. And um, the strength of, of our Bobby Bank Toyota Super Team has been just maximizing the days here, especially since the playoffs have began. So, yeah, we're going to continue to try to quietly do Thanks. us. Awesome. Well, we will go into questions here for Daniel. And just a reminder to the media, if you have a question for Daniel, please raise your hand within the Zoom platform or type us a chat. Who would like to start us off? All right, we'll go to Chris Estrada. Go ahead, Chris. Hey, Daniel, thanks for joining us. Uh, only eight points to cover third through sixth, I believe, in the playoff standings, you being in fifth. So having made it to the championship four twice on points in your career, um, how do you go about keeping all those drivers and all the all their scenarios in mind as you go through a race? And considering that you have been the champ four twice on points, is it relatively easy for you to do? Can you just, just take just talk to us with your mindset on that, please? Yeah, I mean, for me, you know, first off, it's never easy, right? I mean, we've seen guys dominate, see, miss out, we've, and we've seen myself and, and a few others make it on point. So, yeah, just the unknown is there, um, you know, for everyone, which what drives, I feel like, the, the fan base on the NASCAR side, especially once we get here in the playoffs, that's what drivers that show up and try to be better. Each and every week, better the the following week than they were the before, and and we're no different, right? We just got to try to show up and do your part. Um, yeah, like I said, it's not easy by any means, but you have to uh, like you go into it and shrink, play to your strengths, like I was saying earlier, and and I feel like we've done a good job of honing in the, on those as an eighteen team. Um, yeah, and that's a, that's a, that's our play. I mean, we got to rely on those strengths. We have to go through the race weekends and, um, and execute to those strengths. And, and, you know, the, you can't control everybody else. You can't control the decisions other people are going to make, how they are preparing, how they attack, but you can't control yourself. And, and that can take you far if you stick to that. Thank you, Daniel. Our next question will come from Bob Pockers. Go ahead, Bob. Yeah, Daniel, if you don't win, what do you have any sort of target of points you'd like to be kind of ahead of the cut line? going into Martinsville or below the, like, like, is there something that you feel like, okay, this is doable? Yeah. I mean, you know, not that past results guarantees any kind of future success. Right. But I've honestly, even the times where I've made on points, I've worried zero about it. I go and try to run my race. Um, obviously you're aware of other guys, but there's so much that can happen like that, as we've seen um, in all three series, in the swing of a corner or someone's um, decision, and all that worrying does you no good, right? You, you focus on yourself. Um, I have no clear cut point scenario that I look at. I know um, Dave Rogers, the engineers, you know, the folks at JGR and Toyota, they have all the, the metrics to tell you where you need to be, where you want to be. Um, I personally don't care. I, I go about it and I, just, I go race and and um, do my job and the years past in Xfinity, that's that's given me that opportunity to run for a championship. And I don't look at this any different, just go race. Thank you. Yep. Any additional questions for Daniel? Chris Knight, go ahead. Hey Daniel, thanks for your time. Um, I, you know, as much as pressures that you're facing with the playoffs and whatnot, you get to go home at night and be a father to your baby girl and then be a husband to Kenzie. And I was just wondering how much being a father has changed your perspective on life, being a race car driver. You know, we see a lot of young drivers right now being, you know, enjoying the, the role of being a father. Yeah, it, it for sure changes it, Chris. Uh, you know, great question. I, I said even, you know, last year going through some, really the last two years, going through some tough times. You know, our little girl Randa's 17 months old now. You know, 
you get it's fun to enjoy the really good moments with them and to have that extra person that extra dynamic of your life to share those good moments with but where i value it the most is the tough days the, the days where you can come home and have that outlet um you know it's it's an incredible feeling like no other and yeah, I'm thankful for that. Thank you for obviously my wife, Kenzie's support and, and our little girl, Rand. She's starting to, you know, have her own little personality and things that, that make you that much more excited to get home to her, no matter what the day has given you. Um, yeah, it's just, yeah, it's, it's a fun dynamic, something we're having a blast with. Um, any new parent, young parent or any parent knows that every day is different and that's the joy of it. So no matter how your day goes, that, that's always fun to come home to. Thank you, Daniel. Good luck at uh, Kansas. Yeah, thank you. Any additional questions for Daniel? All right, Daniel, thanks so much for joining us and good luck this weekend. Absolutely, guys. Thank y'all.